Hello and welcome to Fishing on Northwest. Wayne and Tommy Donlin. I'm proud of all the fish. What do you think, Tommy? It's the best. Nice one. Hello and welcome to Fish Out Northwest. Wayne England coming to you from the Fish Out Northwest studio this evening. Yes, once again flying solo. Tommy out for another week. Must be nice. Uh, apparently he'll be back. Joining us back next week and... Rumor has it there may be some elk that hit the dirt. Uh, I'll, we'll let him let him get into all of that next week when he's back. Looking forward to that. So tonight you're stuck with me, but no uh, no big deal. We got a lot of great content to get through. We're covering some hunting. We're covering some fishing, and we're going to get into all of that here real shortly. I uh, want to want to thank everybody for tuning in. If it's your first time here on Root Sports, appreciate you checking us out and uh, take a little time if you would jump on over to our webpage www.fishhuntnw.com. There you're going to find uh, a number of uh, things to take advantage of. Two coupons to speak of. Uh, FHN20 with Edge Rods. The FHN20 coupon at checkout is going to save you 20% on every fishing rod through Edge Rods if it's not already attached to a previous uh, discount or reduced pricing. Then, of course, uh, with Phelps Game Calls, Fish Hunt NW10 going to get you 10% uh, off all Phelps Game Calls through the rest of the year. And uh, plenty to take advantage of there as we got a lot of hunting going on now and it will continue through the fall into the first part of winter. So um, tons of info, as I mentioned, to cover tonight. Uh, a couple things. I don't know what you had going on this last week, but uh, how about the weather? I mean, 75 degrees yesterday again and then about uh, 70, 68, 70 degrees today. Boy, it's kind of uh, raising havoc with some of, the, some of the plans indoor, some of the hunts. I know last Monday... I had planned to hit the deer uh, field, my little kind of honey hole that's done well for me the last couple of years. Uh, I put a tree stand in there, as you all know. I opted to spend Monday there. I actually sat that tree stand for 12 hours in that blustering, sideways pounding rain and wind, waiting for that weather window break, which did actually happen about 430 in the afternoon, I was anticipating some deer getting up on the move uh, later in that day before dark. I figured it was going to be uh, a done deal. And, you know, not a single deer moving other than the two point alongside the road on my drive home. So, hey, but you can't shoot them sitting on the couch, putting in the time. Uh, this weekend is all about deer hunting before I get back to fishing. Looking forward to that. 22nd is Sunday. I've actually killed my deer in this area the last two seasons on the 22nd, believe it or not. So I'm hopeful that the 22nd is going to come through, although the weather is pretty much stable. There's no pressure systems dumping. There's no, you know, tremendous uh, temperature drops. So I'm not anticipating a lot of deer movement. They could prove me wrong as we get a little further into this rut and those blacktails start getting a little more active. So uh, I guess we'll wait and see. We're trying to work the weather windows and be out there when those, when those bucks come out in the daylight. That is the key. Hey, before I move along here real quick, uh, pre-holiday sale starts today at Sportco. Don't miss out on some amazing deals. Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sportco with everything, uh, most everything on sale. The deals are crazy. You definitely want to take advantage of that. Early holiday specials. Get down there and check it out or check it out online and uh, save a ton of money. All right, running down the show. We got a good one tonight as we do each and every week. Uh, welcoming back to the studio Trent Fisher with Born and Raised Outdoors. Uh, the crew's been very busy. Those guys are always on the move. Very busy out on several hunts in multiple states. Trent is here to talk all about it. And then, of course, because there's too much info to cover, I got him coming back for a second segment. We'll cover some of the hunting tips and failures and, of course, discuss several different hunts and when that first video will drop that we're all anticipating and waiting for. Uh, then we'll have a short, quick video, one that we just kind of shot last year, Pretty simple, basic day. Jordan and I out with my folks. GoPros in hand, and Jordan did a great job. GoPro in one hand, running the boat in the other. 
Anyway, my mom and dad are in their 80s. They caught, uh, they caught some coho. Mom caught her first coho. We got that little video to bring to you. I think you're going to enjoy that. And then, of course, uh, we'll come back and in studio here kind of for the remainder of the show. I'm introducing you to my folks. Dad's 84, mom's 81, and uh, we want to walk through some history, how it all got started and, you know, why we're all fishing. And then some more later on the show with uh, mom and dad, the passion for fishing and how this fishing partnership for them actually evolved late in life. Wait till you hear this story. It's pretty funny. Um, and then, of course, their passion for kokanee. I want to touch in on that. And the fact that mom's caught her first coho and this last season, she got her first Chinook out of Puget Sound. It was a phenomenal day. So lots to cover with them. If you're in your 80s, you should be doing exactly what these two are doing because they're having a heck of a lot of fun. Don't go anywhere. Going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Going to bring in our friend uh, Trent Fisher. Talk some elk hunting and a lot of things going on with Born and Raised Outdoors right here at the Northwest. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. All right, welcome back here in studio to Wayne England, Fish Out Northwest, and tonight bringing back a guest that I actually, I don't think I've had him on for, I bet it's been almost two years, and I think the last time we were talking bear hunting. Nonetheless, Trent Fisher, born and raised outdoors. Most of you are well familiar with this guy in his, uh, in his crew. I uh, want to welcome back to the show, Trent. Thanks for, uh, thanks for taking some time out. I know you guys are extremely busy. Oh, I appreciate it, man. No, it's it's that time of year. It's that time of year. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, hey, another season kind of in the books. You still got a few things going on. But before we delve on into that, um, you know, there's there's folks out here maybe through uh, Root Sports and whatnot in other states may not be familiar exactly with what you guys got going on. So quickly, maybe list off the uh, the four main characters, the other three that you uh, run around with. And, and actually, how many years? as the born and raised crew been creating content and getting these hunting videos out there. I think we're coming up. I think we're coming up on like 16 years or yeah. some crazy thing at this point. Yeah. Yeah. No, we started out in the DVD world and thought that was where it was at. And then uh, YouTube came a real thing. And so now, um, yeah, born and raised outdoors on YouTube. And we have almost, I don't, I don't know, a couple few, few hundred, few hundred big game hunting videos out there. Yeah. And you got your brother, Trevor. Yeah, I got Trevor, Cody, Strand, uh, Steve. Uh, all, all we got a we got a group that we just all kind of conglomerate in. We got a pretty good team actually, as far mm -hmm. as uh, a couple great camera editors uh, with Chase and Noah, and they do a great job at uh, telling a story. And um, it's it's been it's been pretty awesome as far as having them on board. Yeah, I mean this is, doesn't happen overnight. The growth of it has been impressive, and you guys have been grinding it out for a long time. You and Cody, I mean, it's your full-time deal now, as of a few years ago, and 
And yep. uh, you and I have had those conversations and it's just, it's a great story. Um, going into this year, how many tags did you guys actually pull and how many states did you, did you actually put boots on the ground? Yeah, we were super blessed this year. Um, we drew some decent, not great tags, but we just, just got really blessed on what we, what we actually accomplished this year. Um, I hunted, uh, Oregon, uh, Oregon, New Mexico, Utah. I didn't hunt myself, but I was there. So I will mm -hmm. either go and, um, uh, participate in the hunt and call usually, um, or, and or film as well. And so anyway, we hit Idaho as well. So we hit about four or five different States so far this year. I'm headed to Alaska, uh, in two days. Uh, I went to Alaska before season already. So I've been there. I've just been all over the place lately. It's been, <laughs> That's it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We really good we killed uh we killed nine bulls this year uh so far so is that uh did you fill all your tags all your elk tags did you have nine you uh nine we didn't fill all of our tags there's always a few that you know if it never gets hunted or you know something of that nature some over-the-counter stuff but um but we we were very successful and uh it's been one of our best one of our best years that we've had yeah that's fantastic especially i mean as we're moving forward here you know, most places you go, uh, the, the archery thing, you know, partially thanks to guys like you, your, your crew and, and, and other guys hushing and a handful of others out there, really compelling people to get off the beaten path, grab the bow, get out in the woods and go, go after them. So there's areas that are getting crowded, man. Uh, but you know, it's just inspiration. You guys are driving, uh, <laughs> you guys are driving inspiration to a lot of people. It's opportunity. You know yeah. what I mean? I, yeah. if, if you, that's what I tell everybody there. It's like, well, do you hunt all, you know, public land? And I said, yeah, there is, but also we hunt private timber land. We have any time you can get an opportunity to go hunting. I just encourage anybody to right. go take the opportunity. Yeah. It's a good point. So, uh, to create all this content you guys capture, it takes, I mean, it takes a small army, it takes a crew. You guys got the, you know, the main four that are, that are hunting. You guys are also holding cameras, videographers and, and helping, you know, to actually you, the end result is you want to capture the content. You want to capture the full story. How many on the crew typically hit the ground running? You head to New Mexico for a tag or two. How many, how many people are going? Yeah. So usually, um, we'll, a lot of times Dwayne, we'll run five deep, you know, just yeah. to kill, just to try to hunt one elk, we'll run five deep. And that's one of my favorite ways to do it. If I can have two shooters out front, I can have two cameramen and then I can have back uh, whoever calling um, back there and then trying to just steer that elk in the right direction. It just, there's so much more success when you do it as a team. And right. I, I think people get caught up and oh, I need to go kill. I need to go kill. But if you, if you just break it down and like, man, if you give up for your buddy, just as much as he'll give up for you, mm -hmm. you guys are both going to be way more successful. That's a valuable point right there. I think oftentimes we get so caught up in the, Hey, I got to get this done. No, we collectively need to get this done and, you know, it's going to pay off for everybody. Everybody's rewarded when the team is successful, right? So um, when you guys have multiple tags like that and, you know, somebody's up as, you know, next shooter or whatever, I mean, how do you decide or is it, uh, is it it's usually just, uh, we used to do a coin flip. We used to do <laughs> however, but right. now it's just like, Hey, you go today and I'll go tomorrow. Gotcha. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's some confidence yeah. there too. It's like, Hey, we're going to get our, we're going to get our bulls. Right. So, yeah, coin flip or whatever, or Rochambeau, you want to go first and, uh, you know, or gentlemen out, just whatever. I, I like to hear that. That's fantastic. Who got the biggest elk this season? Uh, actually, the most emotional hunt of the year, it was my father. Actually. Oh, yeah. I got some questions for you on that one here, uh, moving into the second segment. So tell you what, Absolutely. great segue, Absolutely. buddy. We'll, uh, we'll jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to hold you over. We'll jump out for a quick break. We come back. More with Trent Fisher, born and raised outdoors, right here, Fish Out Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, 
Come visit us today. The outdoors await you. Welcome back here to the show, Fisher Northwest in studio guest, uh, Trent Fisher, born and raised outdoors. And Trent, before the break, we were talking about the biggest elk um, that got hammered this year. And and uh, before I jump there, though, I got a couple other questions referencing some of our content from the first segment. So uh, we mentioned multiple states. You personally, which is your personal you know, favorite state to hunt for elk? Oh, man, I, I love Wyoming. Wyoming is yeah. uh it's such a beautiful state and I've done really, really well there in the past. The the thing about now is I get asked that question all the time. Oh, it's yeah. like it's just getting so hard to draw right. Wyoming anymore, just on a general draw. So man, I guess I mean I guess my answer probably turns to whatever state you can hunt now because it's just it's so hard to hunt these states that sure. you know you really want to and it's maybe four years, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. So uh count your yeah. blessings when you get that one for sure. Uh, yeah. who would be the best archer? Who's the best shot amongst the four of you? Um, man, Mr. Consistent. <laughs> it, Who's Mr. Consistent? It, it varies. It varies. I don't know the best shot. I think, I think there's a, there's such thing as a good shot. And then there's such thing as a good hunting, you know, under pressure. Shot. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's yeah. a, it's a totally different thing. So I, 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 yeah. I don't know as far as that goes. Um, it, it, any one of our guys, I would, I would trust with a bow in their hands with an elk within 50 yards. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds, uh, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> so let, let's face it. You guys put out a lot of great content, lots of success stories. Hunting's hard, you know, and especially what you guys are out doing, getting off the beaten path. Sometimes you're using bikes, getting off, you know, way up in there, hiking in, uh, spike camps, the whole deal. I mean, you guys put it all out there. Uh, yeah. there's a lot of successes that people get to enjoy watching. There's gotta be failures too. I mean, how often are some of these hunts complete failures, frustration, you know, is the emotion come out in you guys at times? How's that all go? Yeah, yeah definitely, man. I, I, it's, we're a group of guys. And if any time you get five, six, seven personalities, male personalities all together <laughs> at one yeah. point, and you're trying to go after one common goal yeah. uh, it's i'm not gonna lie to you it's there's been times there's been uh, you know a lot of confrontation a lot yeah. of you know there's times where there's disagreements and you have to just kind of go back to the team and just kind of circle back and say okay what what are we doing guys right. you know let's right. not let this frustrate us i think there was a time that we really felt like killing an animal was the only way that we succeeded oh. and man and, and it was tough you've got to get out of that realm of thinking that way just because it's like it's the hunt that succeeds the most it's the it's maybe teaching someone something about uh wind direction or something about you know not to do this at one time and everything and it was interesting and we never really saw that until we looked at the views that we were getting in the comments and everything and it was interesting where some of the hunts where we didn't shoot anything were some of the most well-viewed, well-watched mm -hmm. videos just because people related to it so well. Sure. So it was it was like, you know what, that was me this season. And it, honestly, that, you know, I haven't had a tag yet this year for elk, but as far as like, that's been me numerous times where I didn't get one or something of that nature. So they're pretty interesting to kind of, you know, you got to put your ego at check and you just got to kind of, you know, <laughs> just go with it sometimes. Well, it says a lot about your guys' character too. You're not afraid to show, I don't want to call them failures because every hunt, you ex the experiences yeah. are well worth it. The the camaraderie, the brotherhood you guys share, you know, the, the, the effort and the team effort you guys put in and then to come up empty handed shows that even you guys at the top of your game, it's not always, like you said, it's not always about the kill, right? It's about 
the, the yeah. time span and the uh, the takeaways in that. And you're right, absolutely right. The 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 person sitting at home watching this on their computer or TV, they they put themselves right in those boots and they they've been there. So uh, credit to you guys for not just you know showboating the kills and, and high fiving and that stuff because you guys are way deeper than that. And I really respect you for that entire entire thing. So um, what are your thoughts on newer folks? getting out there, stomping through the woods, trying to get their first elk, archery, muzzle loader. It involves calling. And oftentimes you hear folks in the woods making a lot of noise. And you think all too often, especially newer folks trying to figure it all out, might put a little too much emphasis on bugling uh, when it wouldn't be appropriate. When it would and when it wouldn't, is that what you're asking? Yeah, as when, far it would, as when it would not be appropriate or it's not, it's not aiding them in any way. You know, it might sound great, but it's really not what you want to be doing. Yeah, I see that that train of thought. So we hunt with the whole train of thought of just like trying to find that one that wants to bugle, yeah. you know, trying to want to find that one that wants to play our game. And there's a lot of times we screw up by not slow playing something and maybe, okay, let's not call, let's figure something else out here. But we honestly move to the calls as fast as, because it gets those elk at close range. It, it makes that encounter um, mm. in, in kind of our favor, right? It's kind of what we've learned doing. If you look at a lot of other hunters, you know, um, Cameron Haynes, for example, he doesn't call hardly at all. Yeah. He's more of a stock kind of guy, gets in with the herd and everything and does some herd shadowing and stuff like that. We, kind of we we drift more towards the side of let's call this thing in and let's get it right in our lap and and let's have an encounter here speaking you know his language and duping him that way but it's just everybody has their own thing and there's no right or wrong way Mm -hmm. it's just you you mentioned on young people and and people that haven't done it much getting out there man any way you want to do it there's no right there's no wrong way just get out there and do it you know just just it's it's not unobtainable Hunting out west is not unobtainable. Anybody can do it, honestly. Well, that's how you gain the experience, right? Those encounters, Correct. whether they're successes or failures, you ping pong that back and forth with that animal, the outcome is a takeaway, right? So um, what do you think? So traveling around multiple states, the rut timing varies so much, but you guys have more successes, you know, uh, getting, getting bulls down, utilizing bugle for the most part or a lot of times are you successful with just simply cow calls we we do i do both so i'll locate with bugles and everything and if i can get a bull to bugle off of cow call i'm not going to use a bugle i'm just gonna and there's a good chance you'll kill that bull if he's going to bugle to a cow call there's a good chance he's going to come home you know in he's love sick and 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 that nature so it's (laughs) it's finding the nature of each elk is what it is yeah exactly so hey you mentioned largest uh before we get out of here largest bull put down this year there was a 300 wind mag involved and i'm not mistaken on a fisher family outing right <laughs> you're correct yeah. yeah we've uh so sig gave me that prototype and it's a three it's the new sig cross 300 wind mag anyway and we've already killed two bulls and three bucks with it already but oh, wow. uh, it's been an absolute hammer but get back to the story it was my dad uh anyway it was a hunt this year that our whole family went on so i had trevor my brother my mother was there and my other brother austin was there and dad so it was all five of us it was really really special and uh dad hammered a bull in um in utah that was uh it's probably somewhere around 335 340 inches it's a big one what an experience man you got that all on uh all on film that one that one coming to a youtube channel near you soon yes correct yeah it is speaking of which when is the uh when's the first uh actual like so we're gonna run a caribou Uh, i took my daughter on her first big game hunt this year and and, uh it yeah and she she killed uh, her first big game animal in alaska which is pretty special saw that yeah and um, so we're gonna run that here in just the next week or so and then we're gonna start uh towards the end of the month on land of the free and then we'll we'll run that for through the end of the year we've got a lot of hunts coming yeah fantastic all right for those that don't know where do they find you real quick before we get out of here just born and raised outdoors on any any platform whether it be youtube facebook uh instagram got it always a pleasure buddy didn't have time to talk black bear or (laughs) blacktail or mule deer hunts (laughs) coming up but i might have to catch up with you down the road here in a bit so uh appreciate you taking time tonight man i know you're again always busy but willing to Uh, willing to spend some time with us appreciate it thanks for the opportunity Dwayne. appreciate it buddy absolutely take care all right trent fisher born and raised outdoors uh make sure you take a little time jump over to youtube instagram uh facebook they're all over the place and their videos are 
are hitting now, and it's uh, fantastic stuff to watch. All right, don't go anywhere. We come back and introduce you to uh, a little bit of, uh, yeah, some coho video right after this break, right here at Fish on Northwest. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. We're gonna show you how to make fishing reels. been here but you know it you've heard the sounds smelled the air and seen where your heart lands if not yet you haven't been here but you've longed for a destination near or far where the young and old find rest and excitement not apart you haven't been here but you're on your way to a place not far explore the dowels.com all right, welcome back here at Fish on Northwest. Uh, that was fantastic. Trent and uh, the, the entire group there at Born and Raised Outdoors, fantastic guys. I told them I'll see them see him soon down there at the Portland show, if uh, nothing else, as we roll into end of January into February. So, um, all right, we're going to switch gears here. Time to talk a little bit of uh, fishing, coho fishing, family history. Uh, lots, of, lots of history there. And uh, I just thought with Tommy being gone and, you know, sometimes I try to pull in a, a co-host and then I thought, you know what, I'm not going to pull in a co-host this week. Uh, I'm going to invite my mom and dad in. You know, David Letterman used to always bring his mom on the show and it was a huge success. So I thought, you know, pressure's on mom. We're going to get get through this evening and, 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 and make it work. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, last year, Jordan and I actually got them out into the Grays Harbor region um, going for coho. And um, this, this summer we were up in Puget Sound and, and as you guys heard me mention earlier, got into some Chinook and, and coho and pinks and whatnot. But last year, we're just out fishing, having family fun, trying to get mom her first coho. And uh, Jordan's running the boat, running GoPros. We, we shot a little video. I threw that together just so you guys could see the experience and the excitement of it all, uh, mom catching coho. So this is just a quick little three-minute GoPro video that, you know what, I just love this thing to death. So we're going to check this out right here. There we go. Back rod. Back rod. Come on. Oh, he's coming in. Coming in. Give me that net. Okay, step, step back. Oh, he's good. Lift the rod. Lift the rod. Oh, there he is. There he is. Lift the rod. Lift the rod. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go home. Oh, here we go. Oh, Nikki, pull the line off the reel. Okay. Got a buck there, Rosie. You got a buck. Look at it. What do you think? Wow! <laughs> oh, check that out. <laughs> ah, there you go, Mama. Mm. There's your first go, oh, though. What do you yeah. think? Oh yeah, yeah we can. Keep oh, everything. We can? Can keep oh. all fish in here. Cool. Okay. 
Well, that's interesting, Mickey. That's that shallow rod, 20 feet. But guess what? Everybody's fishing too deep. Oh. <laughs> Rose, you got a big coconut. <laughs> oh, I should put my, I'm going to get my glove. Glove? What the? Go here, hold this. Okay, thing. I got to hold this. Hold that thing like a man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it. Uh, a day out on the water with these two. You guys remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. Great. Great time. So, before we get too far along, we jump out for a quick break. We come back, I'm going to introduce you to my folks, uh, Marty and Rose. Roe and Mickey, as we refer to them. They're here to join me for the show. Can't wait to get this to you. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this break right here at Fish in Northwest. the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse china and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get Em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge Rods. All right, welcome back here at Fish on Northwest. New co-host in the house this evening to join me in Tommy's absence. We're going to see how this is going to go. Uh, Martin and Rose England, my parents, 84 and 81 years young. I got permission to say my mother's age, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? Not the first time in the studio, but first time on the show. Yeah. True. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's just 
Let's just dial it all the way back, Pops. I mean, you grew up on a dairy farm. Grandpa didn't fish. Nope. Uncle Bert, your brother, he, he didn't fished fish. a little bit, not much. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, did, when did you pick up fishing? How old were you? Probably six. Six years old? Six, seven years old, yeah. And you were fishing what? White River, the flume? Oh, no, no, no. I had a, a good friend of mine, Larry Fargo, and uh, his parents were friends of my mom and dad. Yeah. And... Um, they lived on a lake, uh, Clear Lake, oh, for a while. Okay. Right. And I'd go up there in the summertime. I was probably about seven or eight then. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'd started fishing before that. Even in Olympia, I'd drive my bike over to a little creek with a friend of mine, Dave Haggett. Mm -hmm. And we'd fish this little creek for trout. You just yeah. decided you were going to start fishing, yeah. hanging out with guys that fished. And yeah. Grandpa was okay with it. I'm sure he said, you get your chores done, you can go fishing. Oh, boy, did I get in trouble. <laughs> Especially at the flume, you know. That's, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Gee. Nope, you got to get the work done on the dairy farm. Yeah, you can't you go do. screw around catching doggone fish. Would yeah. you bring them home? Would grandma cook them? Yeah, mostly white fish in the oh, flume yeah. at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What, uh, I think I was what, six or eight? When I when did you get me started fishing? Well, actually, steelhead fishing when you were 12. Yeah, that I remember. Earlier. But yeah. I got a, I got trout at yeah. a young, a young yeah, age. Yeah, you used to take them out to the lakes. Yeah, yeah. to the lakes. I remember Lake Taps. <laughs> my yeah. first trout was on Lake Taps. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the fish in Lake Taps, I caught a trout. Yeah. And all I remember is coming back in. Mom's soaking wet. and Because I grew up with four siblings. And you're you're chasing kids in and out of the water, trying mm -hmm. to keep the, the little guys from... I'm falling Going in. in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there we're out there screwing around catching fish. I was all excited about I think I rode home in the back of the truck with that fish laying next to me. And <laughs> could probably. be probably. Yeah. And then you're you were pretty young because those other guys were pretty Oh yeah. Young. Yeah, Kevin was a baby. So <clears throat> yeah. Um yeah, so we, you know, Dean and I especially. Yeah. Really got got into the fishing deal right. when we were young. I remember, you know, working in the summertime and Dad wanted to go, hey, we're going to go bass fishing, but we got to yeah. get this done first. Mm -hmm. We always had to get stuff done, and then yeah. we could go fishing. He had us yeah. out bass fishing, perch fishing, trout fishing. Yeah. We would ride our bikes down to De Corsi Park. Yeah. 20, 25 <laughs> minutes away. Right. <laughs> no cell phones. No. No life preservers. We're around water. We're young. And we would leave in the morning and not get back to almost dinner in... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't matter, did it? No. no. Didn't matter. It was no. safe then. You always said if it was dark and we weren't home, then you would probably get in the car and come look for yeah. us. She, she <laughs> would. I'd get a little worried uh, yeah. <laughs> She would. Yeah. She would. Yeah. yeah. You were like, oh, he was fine. Hey, you mentioned it. My first steelhead was 12 years old. I started yeah. at 11. Never caught yeah. a fish the first year. Right. Lost a bunch. Yeah. Now, we're talking steelhead fishing in 73, 74. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah. I got my first steelhead at 12 years old, Christmas Eve day. Absolutely. Above Alderton. Uh, and you know what happened? At the outhouse hole. Talk about that. Do you remember that day? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got down there. You got the first fish on. Yeah. And you lost it. It came off. And I looked at your leader and was kind of... Like a pigtail. Yeah, pigtail. <laughs> so I knew what happened. Your knot came loose. Uh huh. You were quite upset about that. You, you told me you go up there and sit on that log. Yeah, absolutely. And you tie a hook and you show it to me. And when you've tied a good enough knot on that hook, I'll yeah. let you go back fishing. I was going to tie it for you. You have to do I it. I know. You made me tie my own leaders <laughs> back then, 12 yeah. years old. So I but did. That's and I, I got that first steelhead. It's a little buck. Yeah. About eight pounds. Pictures yeah. upstairs. But, uh, yeah, Christmas Eve day. Couldn't wait to go to Grandma and Grandpa's house and show them that. Absolutely. <laughs> because that was a proud day. Finally yeah. caught one. Lost so many steelhead. Yeah. And the fact that you knew all that area so well, we'd start out, you know, uh, Pelp River in its heyday, and then we'd go to the Carbon. You are yeah. taking me all over the Carbon River. And then <laughs> anybody that has great memories of the opportunity to fish South Prairie Creek yeah. for wild steelhead, well, I tell you what, that's there, it. There were plants, too. There were plants in there. Yeah. Uh, Lots of plants. But that is a whole different level of steelhead yeah. fishing. And, and, you know, by the time I was driving, 16 years old, and it closed when I was 17, but that final year of steelhead fishing for me and my buddy Keith back then, Absolutely. we lost more steelhead in the wood, in the, in the, in the small creek. And, you know, we're talking authentic drift fishing, small, mm -hmm. small pearl corkies and stuff. Yeah. How about using eggs back in the day for steelhead? It's about all I used for yeah. many years. Finally started using corkies, you know, yeah. later on. But mostly uh, just started out with eggs and yarn. How would you cure up your eggs? What was the process? And there was the some back then it was uh, <laughs> borax and salt, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, they didn't have all the preservatives. But we would tie them in little spawn bags. Oh, <laughs> when I'd run short. Yeah. I'd take uh, the eggs in the jar that yep. you buy, poskies or whatever. Right. And you run short and tie them up in the cheesecloth. Yep. Hey, man. It was, so, di- it was dynamite. Is when you were running short on eggs, because you only steelhead fished back then. So if you got a hen, yeah. you took care of them eggs and you fished those eggs. Yeah. You take me fishing, you're giving me the little cheesecloth bait. Yeah. And I would fish one cheesecloth bait for like the first half of the day. Because you always said the scent's on the yeah. on the rag and with the corky yeah. and the yarn, you know, they're going to buy. And they did, you they know. Did. But uh, now you get a bunch of eggs and go fishing. Boy, you go through eggs like crazy because yeah. it's just you've got <laughs> so much of them, right? Yeah. So, but, you know, early days of fishing, you're the one that got us all into this. And now uh, your great-granddaughter also likes to fish. So because of you, we got four generations Ooh. in this family fishing, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, so much more to get to, so much more to get through. We're going to jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We got a little bit more conversation here with Ro in this passion <laughs> for fishing at a late start at 75 years young. This is a great story. Come back right after this break right here at Fish on Northwest. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company could build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, New loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. We're going to show you how to make fishing reels. Welcome back here in studio to Win England with my folks, Ro and Mickey, as the family <laughs> yeah. calls you. We don't have time. We don't even have time to talk about how your name goes from no. Marty or Martin don't to nickname there. Mickey, but it's a great story. <laughs> yeah. one that I, I, I love that story. So, uh, Mom, we got to kind of focus, dial this down on you here. Uh, this guy's been fishing ever since you've known him. Yeah. You guys oh, growing up and entire life. right in the, yeah. in the Swiss community and in uh, dairy farms and whatnot. You decide at 75 years of age, well, you know, or thereabouts, you're going to start fishing. Or how did that all well, come? come well, together? I think, I think what happened is we when we got Dean's boat back. Yeah. So, Mickey talks about going fishing. I thought, you know, I you, I really don't like you going out there by yourself. Oh, that's a good point. And so I said, you know, I could just come along, sit in the boat, r- ride, oh, you know, and, read and a keep book. you company, and take <laughs> yeah, take bring a book, right, and. Uh, <laughs> So then we kind of talked, and he says, well, maybe you could go fishing. Oh, there's yeah. an idea. You're in yeah. the boat. <laughs> yeah. You're already here. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, that's kind of how it started. And then I thought, probably now he probably thinks, I wish you would have brought that book. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Actually, you know what he was thinking going into? He's like, I could really talk her into fishing. That's an extra rod. That's an extra limit. Yeah. It's like, oh, she's an extra yeah. limit. We yeah, gotta, true. got to maximize my opportunity So he was just using me is what you're saying. Yeah, that's what, that's what, what, what Sherry considers it when I ask her to go fishing. Uh-huh. You just want my limit. So oh. uh, so there you guys are. Now, you've made a handful of trips with friends over the last several years over to Twin Lakes. Right. Fishing yeah. off the docks, fishing out of boats. What's the biggest trip, Lloyd, you've caught over there? Was it off the dock? 
Uh, no, I, we were in Nelson's boat. Yeah. And I think it was like six pounds, wasn't it? And I, I, two years I caught the biggest of yeah. our whole group. Well, of course you did. <laughs> Can I yeah. tell you a little story on I'm that? I'm sure you will, yes. <laughs> Her rod is in the fish, fish in the holder. Right. And she's sitting there, and I look over, and this rod is just gone. Buried. Gone like this yeah, down yeah. there. She looks over, and she looks at me, and she goes, is that my rod? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had barely, I think, sat down. So, right. yeah. 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 so it was yeah. kind of You might want to grab that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't want to grab that. Yeah. Just leave it. Six-pound fish. Yeah. So yeah. What, did you, what did you think? I mean, you get so excited. I, the video doesn't lie. Those coho, you were so far, you were yeah. so proud of her. Yeah. yeah. Such a fun day. Yeah, it was. Uh, these big trout and stuff, I mean, it's just a kick in the pants. Isn't it, it is, yeah. 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 You've gotten pretty competitive, said, too, by the way. She got another one. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but lady anyway. luck. So, yeah. Um, and so when you guys take the Livingston out, now we upgraded your electronics, got you some yeah, big Ray Marine, yeah. which is working for you. Well. Yeah. You got the hand crank down riggers. Now, are you fishing off the down rigger? Yeah. Yes. Oh. You put it down the whole deal? And well, not once always. In a while yeah. I, once in a while. But are you, uh, you baiting up your own, own rig? As mm -hmm. long as it's not uh, wiggly. Oh, <laughs> so like corn was sent and stuff, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, how important is color in kokanee fishing, Mother? <laughs> Pretty, uh, well, seem, they seem to like the green and the pinks. Gotcha. Yeah. Is that your go-to? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty right. much. Yeah. Looking for a little insight here. How important is troll speed? How important is <laughs> well, troll Mickey speed? Well, Mickey says it's pretty important. Oh, what does he know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me a speed of uh, optimal that's typical for, say, going after kokanee. Do you know? Oh, man. Does one, he have that discussion with you? Yeah. Not one, really? One point, what, four? No. Two three. or four. Yeah. Ah, 1.4. Hey, you know what? You nailed it. I, out here in the backyard, that's oh, my go-to okay. for most times. Yeah, 1.4. So well done. I do listen. Uh, when the fish aren't biting, yeah. be honest now, and he's kind of doing his thing, are you suggestive? Do you like, hey, we should probably... I did. I Once in a while, I'll say, you know, maybe. Yeah. yeah Does he listen? Last time he did, I think. And? Sometimes. And then... Actually, I think we switched out something, and then uh, we did catch something. The last couple times you guys have hit the lake, yeah. who's, who's caught the majority of the fish? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I know you don't. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's see that last time, and kokanee. Yeah. yeah. All kokanee. Right. I got five kokanee. And he got... Time, time before last. Zero. He got zero. Yeah. I got zero. Now, you got a 19-incher out of American Lake. I did. Yes. Nice, nice big fish. kokanee. Yeah. Nice and these fish. fish you guys caught recently are these late fall fish starting to turn a little bit, getting the kipe on them. Yeah. But you got five that day, he got none. Yeah, yeah. This and is that's perfect, the most we've ever caught, though. On, uh, on as far kokanee. as uh, number of kokanee on a yeah. day. It's mm -hmm. been a tough grind out there, but you guys yeah. are grinding. I mean, there you are, again, 81, 84, launching the Livingston, hitting the water. You guys are wearing your PFDs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because back in the day, it oh, didn't absolutely. matter. Yeah, no, With we us do. kids, you, yeah. you didn't absolutely. care. But now it's important, apparently. Yeah. So I got it. I see where the value yeah. is here. Well, okay. Know, the, what? My first uh, fish was a kokanee, the first fish I caught. Oh, when my When we gosh. started, the first time we went out. And then you knew you were in trouble. Yeah. And you keep bringing her back. <laughs> I started her off with a, a spinner outfit. I yeah. thought, well, I just wanted her to catch a trout or something sure, out yeah. there. Just get her started. So she's probably back there about 70 feet, just uh, no weight, just letting them go along. Pretty soon that rod just goes ramp like that. And this kokanee comes out of the water, and I just going. Oh, boy. <laughs> on a worm. Yeah. yeah. I got pretty excited. Lady yeah, she got sure. and, and she goes, it's jumping. <laughs> That's what they do. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, we got a little bit more to get through. We never have enough time, but we're going to jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We got more. <laughs> With Ro and Mickey <laughs> after this break, right here, Fish on the Northwest. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima Boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. 
Oh, geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. All right, welcome back here in Studio New England with my folks, Ro and Mickey. You guys are kicking the pants. Um, so, growing up fishing, Pops, we put a lot of time in on the Puyallup. Yeah. And yeah. you had me steelhead fishing. Christmas break, we were fishing. Yeah. Right? That was, you took time off work. Uh, you took a week off during Christmas break. You and I go steelhead fishing. Yeah. And you had me out there. Was, any morning I wanted to go, you were taking me. Yeah. You know, and Bob Campbell sometimes joined us. And, yeah. Um, then after I got hired on the fire department, started heading down here, fishing this Grace Harbor system. Those first coho that we started putting on the beach, when we were used to six and eight pounders up there out of Puyallup, and yeah. I think we're doing pretty good. What'd you think about the fish down here way back oh in, the, in the early 90s? Oh boy. Uh -huh. I, oh gee, that, uh, that one day went into Wainucci the first time. Unbelievable. Never saw silvers like that. And the local guy comes up to us and he goes, yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah. You know, we're looking at 13, 14 pound coho, right? Yeah, right. To us, it was a whole new world. And he had been fishing down here now for 35, 36 yeah. years. And um, back then, you know, getting those, me, you, and Dean, getting those big Chinook, yeah. keeping them, drift fishing eggs and regs, yeah. right? Eggs and regs. What colors would you put into that reg? Well, still had, I was using the... Purple, orange, and uh, kind of a goldish yellow. Mm -hmm. And then for salmon, I'd throw a chartreuse yeah. in there. Yeah, you always told me that that color combo you thought really looked like a sand shrimp underwater. And you run that yeah. with some eggs. And yeah. Boy, for years, long before float fish cool. and everything else, we would just drift fish eggs and corky or eggs yeah. and rags. And boy, yeah. them, them. For those that have never felt a Chinook biting on eggs oh, like that, geez. aren't you missing out? Just, just give them time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't be too early. Just Don't pull the time. trigger too early. So. When he was bringing steelhead home, winter steelhead home back in the day like that, um, we didn't have vacuum sealers and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. How'd you freeze that stuff, or did we just eat the fish till it was gone? You, I mean, you had five yeah. kids to feed, do you remember? Hmm. Did all the kids like fish? Did we all eat fish? Uh, Your sister. Not my sister. Yeah, no. not too much. <laughs> she may have. No, I don't no, think she maybe did. when she was younger, she yeah. maybe tried no, but salmon, but she doesn't really do fish. But you guys weren't, you know, you weren't barbecuing a whole lot back then. No. You're, you're cooking it in the oven and whatnot, you yeah. know? And it's winter steelhead, which is not the best tasting no. fish out there, but, <laughs> no. hey, you're a diesel mechanic raising yeah. five kids, yeah. you know? You, you catch a you fish, can. we're yeah. eating that fish. Yeah. yeah. That was the difference. Like, we're fishing for sustenance here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> has Judy ever even caught a fish? No. Did she go fishing? No. Yeah, she might have when she was little, but I don't. I don't remember. She, she I don't. Remember. Of course, I don't remember a lot of things. <laughs> wow, this is true. Yeah. yeah, but you do remember a lot of stuff too. How about your hatchery chinook this summer oh. on Puget Sound? Yeah, well, it, well, that was an awesome day anyway. Wasn't Just it to something? be with you and Jordan. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So was, great, three generations out yeah. there doing that, and for you to catch a chinook like that. Yeah. Uh, I and can I often like pull to, it in. Oh. <laughs> They're strong. Yeah. Well, often, and I even tell people this, you know, you're you're five foot with the fro, five, four eleven. Yeah, yeah. If we pat it down, I mean, and I remind you, the rods we're using are more than twice as long as you are tall. Yeah, and, and they're so, pretty heavy. Yeah, but you do great. I mean, yeah. you get those fish in, and uh, it all comes together. All right, uh, we need to jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We come back. We're gonna close out the show with Rome Mickey. More right here, Fish on Northwest. <laughs> Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. 
Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio as we wind down the show uh, with my folks. I'm so glad you guys made it in. How's the uh, how's the butt whooping going? It continues, huh? It's hard to sit down. <laughs> I find it amusing that uh, mom told me flat out one of her biggest regrets in life is that she started so late in life fishing. And you then back that up with one of your biggest regrets is that you allowed her to get into the boat. Uh, you thought it was a good plan going in, but not so much at this not point. Not so much, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> because it, uh, it hurts every time, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, uh, oh. You guys are awesome. I'm so proud of the fact that you guys are getting that boat out there, hitting the water. And I always know when you're out there, I got people that call me and say, hey, your folks are out here ridding the world of fish again. So yeah. it's a good thing. So yeah. outstanding. Hey, before we get out of here, uh, are you hunting this weekend? You should. These weather systems may be conducive. I'll tell you what, here's a couple of photos off my trail cam. I got a bear in there. If you guys have been following us on mm -hmm. Facebook, you'll notice that I put this bear up. I had a lot of people weigh in on this and no pun intended, wow. but that bear is right around a 300 pound wow. bear. If that guy decides to show during daylight hours, I may have to tattoo him. Although I don't really want to shoot a bear, but that one is definitely worth doing. And I got a couple nice bucks in there as well that I've been chasing. Um, there's a, there's a couple nice size three points. That's one of the bigger ones. Uh, hopefully you guys have a lot of activity on your trail cams and uh, can take advantage of the current modern rifle season, which goes through um, till October 31st. So you still got some time to get that blacktail. Few of them have been hit in the dirt for sure. Uh, I'm hoping to close the deal. Like I told you at the start of the show, the 22nd, historically, at least the last two years, has been my go-to day. Would like for a little more significant of a weather drop, as in temperature, I guess we'll see what it brings us but uh, nonetheless I'm uh, I'm putting some time back in the woods this weekend hopefully you are too uh, fishing should should still continue got a lot of opportunity out here in these uh, Grace Harbor region and even up north Snohomish system whatnot there's a lot of coho around it's a banner year plenty of time to still take advantage of that you know the nice thing out here we get these coho coming all the way in through November so we may bundle you up nice and warm mm. get you on a riverbank casting Ooh. <laughs> Teach you how to twitch jigs. Ooh. I know a guy that makes them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he might be able to outfit you with some jigs. So yeah, okay. Could be a little fun. Wouldn't that be great to get her out, even bob her an egg in it? Maybe get over to uh, Tillman's or something to see if we can. No, you don't want to deal with that? No. <laughs> you don't want to hunt. No, don't start that. Don't start that yeah. one. Well, about time. We've been doing this show four and a half years now, and you guys finally, finally fit me into your busy schedule. Yeah. yeah. So I appreciate that. Well, thank that. you for having us. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank you so much. Dude. All right. Love you guys. So Love glad you can keep it going. All right. That's going to do it for us this week right here. Uh, Fish on Northwest. Have a great week. Have a great week. And get out there and do something. We'll see you next week live in studio. Fish on Northwest. <laughs>